Right. Yeah. It was right. Right. As that hit, you did the, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, last spring, I think it was in 2020 for sure. But, uh, I wanted to congratulate you on your new album, uh, with oh, the piece Perdomo project. Um, how did that, uh, uh, this project come about with Fernando? First of all, I've been calling it the app project. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, so I've been telling people to download the app at iTunes and, and please don't use, don't do it on Spotify. <laughs> buy the album because the Spotify the musicians make a, nothing, right? You know? And we're, we're trying to make you know keep the careers going here. You know, sure. not so much me, but you know Fernando Podomo. You know, he does this for a living. You know, so anyway, uh, I met him through um, Tom Dowd's family. His daughter called me and told me that before Tom died, he wanted to work with with uh, Fernando, and uh, and then Fernando called her last year and said that he wanted me to play on a track of his or two. So she told me that, and I, you know, normally I don't play on albums of people that are unknown, you know, but right. I just moved to Florida and I put a studio in the house and I needed some experience in working the studio, you know, so I thought this might be a good opportunity. And it absolutely was because we, started sending stems back and forth. I, I had an idea, a good idea how to work it. So I had done a couple of things at that point, but you know, I wanted to get more experience in editing and getting stems and flying them in and putting them in, lining them up, you know, all that stuff that you do when you have a home studio and you're the engineer. So, um, so we started working on one song at a time and eventually over a period of months, we had 18 songs done. And all instrumentals, and I said, you know, these are pretty damn good. Mm. You know, we should get them released. So I made a call to Cleopatra Records. I know the owner. I've known him since 1992. We've been friends. I told him, look, I think this is a really cool concept for an album, and you know, it's an instrumental album. Like, and there haven't been many of these kind of albums out lately. Right. So, what do you think? And they said, yeah, we like it. So they put a deal together, which included a couple of videos. And uh, so we did that. So we picked 12 of the 18 songs. And now we got six songs in the can for the next one. Oh, very good. Yeah, that's great. I, I really like that, the, the new single, the Rocket to the Sun. I liked his slide playing. And of course, you're playing it yeah, as well. Yeah, he's awesome. He, he's so talented. Uh, the actual new, there's a new single after that one called Flower Child. Okay. You know? And uh, that one's really good too. Um, Rocket to the Sun was one that we, we tried something different. Instead of using a click, I said, well, I'm going to send you a drum track and see if you can, what you can do with it. And he came up with the Rocket to the Sun idea, you know, but he nice. used the dynamics and the, the flow of the drums and where the fills were placed and everything to initiate, you know, the song on where, where it was going, you mm -hmm. know, and, and the way I played it, you know. So you play melodically where I could hear where a verse is, I could hear where a chorus is, I could hear a bridge, I could hear where a solo goes. You know, just from the way you're playing and the dynamics you're using and the mel mel uh, melody, and the drums have like a melody to it. And I said, oh, well, thank you. But once we did that, then we did four, four other ones, you know, like that. And then we did the rest of them. Uh, so we did a total of about five, starting with the drums instead of starting with the guitar. An interesting concept and I'm doing a King Cobra record and we're doing the same thing. Instead of using a click, you got the two previous King Cobra records we did. You have the multi-track, grab some of the drums and let's write the songs to the drums. He said, oh, that's a great idea. So we did that. And now we have like 10 or 11 songs and one, of, one or two of them, we actually wrote with the drums starting the track. You know, like um, we have Rowan Robinson who played with Dio playing with us and Carlos Cavazo from Quiet Riot playing with us. So, and Johnny Rod, the original bass player, me and Paul Shatina. So I put this really cool drum track down and Rowan put this really cool guitar track to it. And then Paul put some really great lyrics to it. And, you know, and that's how we've been writing that. But, but from the experience I had with Fernando, I said, let's use the drum tracks instead of using a click, you know? Right. Oh, that, I can't wait to hear the new King Cobra. That's, a, that's no, it's, exciting it's news. Pretty bad, it's pretty badass, actually. 
I bet it is, no, no doubt. Um, now, do you have any plans to uh, to play live with Fernando, or are you busy doing yeah, the King Cobra? The plan, the plan is to to get this album going as much as we can, mm -hmm. get some sales going, we'll do another video, and then you know after I'm done with the King Cobra record or in between um, when we're mixing King Cobra probably to work on new songs with Fernando and get at least you know five or six more songs. Right. And do, and do a second album, release it like you know this year, uh, 2022. Right. You know, which will be you know maybe nine months or ten months after the first one, and then when we get that going and we find a release date, and try and book some small smaller gigs like you know club gigs, you know like in Florida and New York, places that where we know musicians where we can go in, rehearse with them, and just me and him, you know, play with you know, two other guys. And and do this, like do do some shows, oh, yeah. Because you, know? uh, you know, with the way the business is today, it's very difficult to go out and 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 bring a whole band touring and everything. You, 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 unless you got tour support from a label, you know, it's impossible. Wow. Right? <coughs> Excuse me. And when you go out touring now, you know, what do you do? You get people to buy it on Spotify, and you, you make nothing on Spotify. Right. You know? So it's a very difficult way to do it. That's why there's a lot of bands that are making it today that have been together for 10, 10 years, you know? Right, right. It's slowly building, it's slowly building. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's not like mm. it used to be, you know? Sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and like I, I say, just I just do it because I love creating, I love playing. And, you know, if we get a break and, you know, something goes viral and it, it starts selling where there's enough numbers to actually make some money. Well, I just hope now to pay back the small advance we got from Cleopatra so we can do the next one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, is there actual physical copy? I always love a physical copy, whether it be yeah, vinyl the or CDs, CD. The CDs. Nice. I, I don't know. I thought they were going to do vinyl, but I didn't hear about the vinyl. I got to ask them about that. Okay. You know, maybe All they right. can do vinyl and print up X amount of vinyls and do like a relaunch with another right. video to promote sure. the vinyl. <laughs> I'm call yeah i love i love the vinyl you can look at the liner notes and the artwork and all that so yeah yeah, yeah but i'm old I school mean, too even, even a cd right do that but right. that's why there's no more new icons of today you know, right even, even like these new bands that are, that are that, you know doing well they're selling a couple of two or three thousand seats there's not a lot of press on who's who mm-hmm because, you know, you download something, and even on iTunes, you download an iTunes, it doesn't tell you who the drum guy is or the guitar player. I mean, sh tell me the last brand new guitar icon from a new band that everybody knows that it's like really big. You can't. <laughs> I can't either. Right. I can't either, you know, and that's, that's the bad part about it. That's affecting all the musical instrument com companies, especially the ones that make... Uh, Keyboard, well, not so much keyboard because the keyboards are being used in all the pop songs. Right. You know? But like bass playing, drummers, guitar playing, they're all, you know, they're, they're kind of negative in the music store area. Right. Yeah, There's no more for clinics sure. for any of those things anymore because they don't sell because, because not a lot of people are buying guitar drums and basses anymore. Yeah. You know? They're buying keyboards and doing pop songs. Right. You know? And and drum machines instead of the <laughs> real thing. Yeah, yeah. Real drums, you know. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, so so. so not only with this new album, you also just released uh the guitar Zeus box set, um, which is fantastic. Um, how many new tunes are on that uh on the there's, new box there's set? Three new songs. Okay. And then there's three songs that were like rough mixes that don't have any lead guitar on it. So if you're a guitar player, you could play along with that. If you're a singer, you could sing along by itself. There's just no no vocal on that, and there's one track that has a vocal but no guitar, you know. Yeah. So, and they're cool songs, the ones that we picked to do that with. So there's like really six new variations, or six, there's three new songs and six and three kind of variations, and 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 then there's some songs that were never released here, you know, okay. on a, on a full album like. Um, Oh, the one with John Norum, 
uh, I don't think it was released here. And so it's being released worldwide and it has 39 tracks on it. Mm. It's a brand new uh, booklet with some interviews. It's got um, uh, those, the extra three CDs, four LPs, you know, and uh, then there's a bundle you can buy by that plus they have a, a medallion that has my logo on it, right? Made of silver with a, also a turquoise guitar Zeus pick on a black chain, which is pretty cool. And then they have a t-shirt and have an autographed picture that I, that I autographed, I don't know, 200 pictures, 500 pictures. I forgot how many, so many. Right. Yeah. You know? and, then, and that's, a, I mean, you get the t-shirt, the medallion and the picture, I think for 20 bucks more. Which is pretty good price. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no question. <laughs> now, uh, the, the new song with Tommy Thayer on it that uh, kind of has a psychedelic kind of feel to it. Who's the singer on that track? That's Kelly Keeling. He's on the okay. whole record. Right. Okay. Nice. Kelly Very Keeling's cool. on the whole record except for two tracks. One track has Edgar Winner mm. with Mick Mars on it, and one track has uh, King's X singer Doug Pinnock. Oh, very good. Okay. It's funny because Doug Pinnock's vo vo uh, track, Ingve wanted to be on a track with Doug. <laughs> Mick Mars wanted to be on a track with Edgar Winter. So I paired them off. Right. That's awesome. But Kelly, but Kelly, who's was a great singer, and rhythm guitar player and lead guitar player, bass player, phenomenal talent. You know, right. uh, this, you know we, we released these in 1995. And as you could hear, from the new song, Mr. Fight, it still sounds like today. You know, the, the mix and the, and the sound of the instruments is just very heavy. It's kind of like Blue Murder meets Soundgarden meets the Beatles. So it's, <laughs> it's got all those elements, you know? Sure. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with the fact that we recorded that song in 1995 or six, that new song that's on uh, YouTube. Right. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. Um, do you have a favorite um, guitarist that you worked on with that project, on that project? It's like going into Baskin Robbins. What's your favorite flavor? <laughs> I don't really have one favorite flavor. They were all so different and so good. Mm. You know, I mean, everybody played great on the record. Even right. Steven Seagal. <laughs> 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 he did a blues and he's Pretty elementary, but he did a nice job. I put him on with Seymour Duncan. You know who that is? See, no, I don't. He makes the pickups. Oh, really? Seymour Duncan pickups for all, everybody, for Jeff Beck, for this one, for that one. And he's, he's a great guitar player. Wow. And uh, I, I've known him for years. I said, back then, I said, Seymour, I'm going to do a, a blues with, with uh, Steven Seagal. I want you to play rhythm and then play lead. Yeah, you know, like when he's playing lead, you play rhythm. When he's when you're playing lead, he'll play rhythm. I said, I'm gonna play just one snare drum with really down to earth blues. What do you think? He said, Great. You know, so he nice. did that. And you know, he's a you know, it's a huge company. Right. Some of Duncan pickups, just look it up on the internet, it's huge. Huh. You've played with everybody. I can't imagine yeah, <laughs> what yeah. you then, played. Then we got we went then we got uh, John McEnroe, the tennis player, wanted to play huh. on it. So I wow. put him on a song called Stash. Does some fills and he does this rhythm guitar part, just going bam, 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 <laughs> kind of like fame. And then he does some fills. Nice. That was awesome. I said, wow, I didn't know you play guitar. I said, sure, come on in. You, know? <laughs> you want to play guitar and guitars, is you play and you're a name, actor, tennis player, whatever, come and play. Right. Man, that's a that's a great project for sure. Yeah, it was an unbelievable project. Then I did Guitar Zeus Japan. Mm. I did Guitar Zeus Korea with Korean guys and Japanese guys. So it, it was like amazing. One of the Japanese guys made it to this album uh, and one Korean guy, you know, and, uh, you know, it was all about the songs, really good songs, you know. So, right. so this for me is a, one of the best projects I did because I, it was my idea, my concept. I produced it. I gathered all the all the parts, you know, from Tony Franklin, Kelly Keeling, me, the, the engineers, the producers, uh, and then I ended up producing a lot of it. 
the, the record label was done by a manager I found. So the whole thing was my baby, you know? Nice. And it's, I think it's some of the best stuff I've done in my career. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Very good. So um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just happened, and you made, made some comments about the Rock Hall here that made the news a few weeks ago. Um, and I agree with you. There's a ton of classic rock artists that are not in the Hall of Fame, like Grand Funk and Foreigner and, of course, all these guys. Um, I mean, Alice Co- did Alice Cooper make it finally? Yeah, he's finally in. Good. It took- I mean, but, you know, it's ridiculous. Alice Cooper should have been in before Kiss. Right. You know, I should yeah, have been in sure. at the beginning. Vanilla <laughs> Fudge should be in. I thought it was about, you know, inspiration and, and, and you know, all that stuff, you know, influences on people. You know, come on, you got the Go-Go's went in. And what do they influence? <laughs> I mean, right. I know them. They're all nice people. And everything, but come on, man. Yeah. If you call this the Music Hall of Fame and just have it for not influence and not what it, the hall was originally made for mm. you know like i'm in the, the modern drummer hall of fame right. i'm in there because of my influence for and sure. what i've done in in for drumming you know uh i mean long island has a music hall of fame vanilla fudger in there for the same reason you know i'm in the the heavy metal hall of fame for the influence i'm not in there for how many records i sold <laughs> you know right. i mean back in the day you got you got guys like chuck barrier in it you know He's right. in it for the influence. He's not in it for many records he sold. You know, so why why do they leave out groups like Farn or groups like Vanilla Fudge? Uh, is Deep Purple? Yeah, Deep Purple's in it now. Yeah, oh, they, man, it took a long that. time though. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, but I mean, before Deep Purple, before we should have been in there. You know, right. I mean, yeah. come on, we influenced so many bands. We influenced influenced a genre. We created a style of music. You know, we were there when the when the FM radio station was starting, we started the long song. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and, and you're still out doing it. And we're still doing it. And we're still alive. And they got people in there that are, that are not alive, which is fine. But they, one good thing they did, they showed Tim Bogart's picture mm. of the people who died. Right. I'm happy they did that. Yes. But otherwise, can we change the name. You're putting right. rappers in there. You're putting people that, that have nothing to do with rock. In there. I mean, the, the Go Go's. I mean, come on, how rock is the Go Go's? Right. You know? That's a that's a pop band. Now, I will give them credit for being all female, but yeah, they're they're so what the band. Runaways are not in it. They were all female. <laughs> yeah. They were the first female. Yeah. You know, and that's about influence. You're right. You are right. Yeah. And, and it's, it's stupid. I, I don't. People go, oh, don't you? Aren't you? Uh, don't you care that you're not in the Rock Hall of Fame? I said. I don't really care because it's 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 getting cheesy now. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah. it's fine in there, but I know people who are in there it didn't change their career. Right, it did nothing for them, other than getting an HBO special you, that you see on it. <laughs> and <laughs> and, that's, and it. that's what it's that's what it's become. It's become a TV show where they yeah. were you know they always had a jam. They were supposed to be a jam session at the end with everybody, and yeah. HBO cut it short and said we ran out of time. Uh, yeah. What do you mean you ran out of time? <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's bull. Yeah. So I'm with you. Care. You know, I'm set up. I live in a beautiful house. I got cars and I got a studio. I'm still recording. I got a, a, a great wife and a dog. My kids grew up. My daughter got married. You know, life is good. I don't care if I'm in the Rock Hall <laughs> of Fame or if I'm not in the Rock Hall of Fame. Yeah, beautiful. Everybody, you know, I'm, I'm in the... Uh, uh, what is it? Rolling Stone drummers of all time at number twenty-eight. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive, uh, yeah, for so, sure. I mean, that's okay, you know. Right. Oh, and talk about influential. I was just uh, talking with Chasm Sultan, and he mentioned that one of the first shows he ever went to was Cactus out on Long Island when he was a go. kid, and, yeah. and he said it's surreal that you and he are friends now, and uh, yeah. you know, and I bet you have a bunch of stories like that about. Oh, yeah. And, and I think that show that he was talking about was a Comac Arena. It could have been Comac Arena when it's the same show that we play with Alice Cooper. Uh-huh. And that's the show that when I met Paul Stanley for the first time, and they, he told me that him and Gene were, were uh, fans of Cactus. They said they went to see Alice Cooper and Cactus together, and that's where they got the idea of doing uh, Kiss. 
Mm. Uh, this, uh, if we do uh, cactus energy and rawness and a, and a show like, like Alice Cooper, we maybe would have something cool. Absolutely. You probably won't say that now. <laughs> but, but there, cool. I mean, there you go. But... I, I love, I love those guys. You know, mm -hmm. they did me a favor with King Cobra. They put me on on tour with King Cobra, mm. and uh, I didn't have to pay them. They actually <laughs> paid us. And right. uh, I, I did Paul's album. I, I, Paul got me a, a coin management to manage me in seventies. You know, at Rod Stewart. So yeah, they're good people. Yeah, very good. Now, the, the last time uh, we spoke, I forgot to ask about you playing on the Dogs of War by Pink Floyd. How did that come about? I got a message from Bob Ezrin. I, <laughs> I came home. It was a message on my, <coughs> you know, at the time, those little uh, tape machines that you <laughs> take a message at home. And, and uh, he said, Carmine is Bob Ezrin. I'm producing a band that's screaming for Carmine drum fills. I said, okay. So I called Bob. I said, hey, Bob, who's the band? He said, Pink Floyd. I said, Pink Floyd? I said, where's Nick? Right. He said, oh, he'll be there. I said, so why ain't he playing? He said, well, his calluses are soft. He's been racing his Ferraris. And uh, <laughs> they want to get some new blood. I said, wow. I said, sure. Sounds good. I'll let do it. I went in and spent the day with them. And I never got to hear the finished product until it came out because, you know, I put, I don't know, I played to a four track. I filled up, I don't know how many 15 minute uh, reel to reels, maybe four or five. So we had a lot of drums on there. So every time I called him, I said, can I hear the drum part? And he said, I said, how is it? He goes, wonderful. Fantastic. Every next week, fantastic. Unbelievable! Every week it was another another one word answer. So finally, I was up in Canada doing a movie called Black Roses. I was in the movies. We did the soundtrack. It was a, a tacky heavy metal horror movie. It had it had Big Pussy from uh, oh. Sopranos in it. Sopranos, that was yeah. the first movie. Yeah, and and we became friends in that movie. And and I heard the Pink Floyd album was released. I said, Wow! So I went downstairs and and. Canada, they have those uh, malls under the ground because, you know, it's so cold there, you know. Mm. So I went downstairs in the underground mall and I, I found the record store and I bought a cassette. I put it <laughs> on my Walkman and I heard it and I was blown away. I said, wow, a great drum part. <laughs> That's you know? right. And then I saw them on that tour and I saw uh, Nick trying to play my drum parts. <laughs> and they, there was a big TV show and a big, a big stadium show they did. You know, and they played Dogs of War. And I said, ah, this is funny, man. <laughs> Nick Mason trying to play Carmine at Pieces Filth. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, so I have to ask you about if you have any memories of playing in Cleveland, like back in the 70s, did you stay at the legendary Swingos? I don't know if you remember of Swingos. <laughs> of course we stayed at Swingos. With Rod Stewart, we stayed there all the time. What a wild hotel. <laughs> Every room was different, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's crazy, crazy rooms. I can't remember what the rooms were now. It's so long ago, but I do remember they were di different and de de decadent is the word, I guess. All right. You know? Yeah. And, uh, it looked like a, it should look like a whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> I think half of it was actually. <laughs> yeah. That's what it looked like, you know. Right. Yeah. That's what. Um, th did you meet any other <laughs> bands while you were there? Like, I know a lot of bands stayed there that, you know, come through time. Uh, time I don't know. When we stayed there with Rod, there was, you know, we had like 40 people staying there. So it wasn't right. a lot of room for other bands. It wasn't <laughs> that big. Okay. Yeah, it was a little bit before my time. And they tore it down. Still, like, was it gone now? Not oh, down? yeah. It's been, it's been gone. Really? Yeah. <laughs> when did they knock it down? I think the early 80s. Wow. Yeah. So that's been Swingos. a while. I wouldn't have remembered the name. <laughs> but I certainly remember the con the concept and the some of the ideas of the rooms that were you know, purple and red lights and <laughs> crazy, crazy yeah. stuff. The shrink, those those uh, skinny uh, uh, like pieces of string hanging down, beaded stuff hanging down from the <laughs> lamps. You know, nice crazy stuff. <laughs> crazy 70s man that's a crazy time yeah, right it's, it's, oh, unbelievable time <laughs> good well um it seems in, in recent years a lot of bands have gotten back together you know like guns and roses and the black crows rage against the machine any chance of a blue murder reunion 
dude. If you I love that first John Sy- uh, Me too. <laughs> if if you can get John Sykes out of his house on the road, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. But we we almost did it, and John wanted to do a tour with uh, with, with Blue Murder of his history, you know, doing yeah. like Tigers of the Panzan, but nobody over here knows that what yeah. that is. Uh, Thin Lizzy, White Snake, and Blue Murder. So I said, well, if we're going to do that, let's do my history too. More people know, you know, a lot about my history, but I don't want to do that. I said, I want to do Blue Murder. People uh-huh. want to hit Blue Murder. Right. So what we agreed upon, he was going to do a tour himself of that tour. And then when that's done, I saw him last year at the uh, the uh, Heavy Metal Hall of Fame Awards. And he was collecting an award for Bob Daisley, uh, as Bob was in Australia. And uh, you know, everything was fine. We were friendly and everything. He even introduced me to his, he had a, a young black drummer who was dying to meet me, you know, so <laughs> I, I met him and everything. I said, look, when you're done with this, then let's do Blue Murder because there's so many people want to hear Blue Murder. It's from back then for years now, every interview I hear is like about that. There's always Blue Murder I mentioned, <laughs> you know, because it was a great record. It was a great band. You know, second album was great too. We have a lot of material that we can choose from and, you know, we can just go out and, and play. We played a couple of years ago, just me, him and Tony, just for the hell of it. Mm. And it was tight. Oh, you know, it was like riding <laughs> a bike, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. man. I want to be in a fly on the wall in that room. I want to oh, boy, <laughs> that would I look like Yeah. Yeah, we always awesome. had a good time. We'd be smoking pot and just drinking tea and, and playing, you know, there's it was, it was always a good time with Blue Murder. When I first like auditioned with them, I, I, I was in England. I actually went to find Blue Murder because I love Sykes and I love Tony. I said, I got I to gotta play with these guys. I, Cozy was originally in it and I, Cozy bailed. And I said, I'm going to go find out where these guys are. So I went to England when uh, my brother was playing with Dio over mm, there. Yeah. So I figured somebody would know how to get a hold of John Sykes, you know? And sure enough, somebody did and I went. I played on Cozy's drums. I drove two hours to Blackpool, three hours, whatever it was. And I played on Cozy's drums. And before we played, we all smoked some hash. <laughs> that was their <laughs> ritual, you know? But uh, amazing, amazing record. Mm. Great sounds of Bob Rock and uh, Mike Frazier. Amazing drum sounds. I did the drums twice on that record. Mm. And I, re- I record like I record now. I recorded the, the uh, Energy Overload album the same way with a click. And you play the drums to a track. And then you, then you pick out the best ones you want to do. And then... And after you do that, hey, that's my dog. Hold on, put it on pause for a minute. All right, gotcha. Hey, in the fucking bed. <laughs> Good dog. <laughs> yeah, I should have closed the door. Anyway, so, so when we, oh, there he is again. I'll put it on pause again. Yep, I got you. Can you get? I got you. Yeah. So, uh, I Bob Day, Bob Day's Bob, Bob Rock come up and he said. Look, we're getting a much better drum sound now. You want to keep what we got or you want to do it over and get a much better drum sound? I said, let's do it over. Mm-hmm. So I did the whole album over. Wow. You know, and this time I made sure that I didn't duplicate fills. I said, mm-hmm. every fill I did was a different fill from the other fill. Even if it's just a few different rhythms, right. a few different strokes, I tried not to duplicate a fill exactly. That'd, that'd be difficult to do. Yeah, it was difficult. <laughs> when I did so, I said, wait a minute. I think I did that in so-and-so. And we go back and listen. I did. Let me change it. Hmm. Wow. How about that? Um, we, spent, we spent two weeks on doing the drums. And, and it shows. Now you got to yeah. hear that drum sound, the sound of the album itself on, on analog. But what hmm. came out was a digital version. You know, because... Bob Rock put it to a Sony digital tape and was mixing off of that. And me and John said, oh man, we don't want that. We want it on analog. So we went in there, we raised hell <laughs> at Bob Rock and Bob Rock said, either you get out or I stop mixing now. <laughs> so we're like two little dogs with our tail between our legs. We left <laughs> I said, okay, finish mixing. Right. We, we, you know, it was 
thing was taking forever to do, you know? Mm. Yeah. So what are your plans for 2022 or any, uh, are you hitting the road with uh, Vanilla Fudge or your brother? Or well, anything gonna, going on? I mean, we don't have anything really booked yet. We just finished a bunch of dates. Uh, I'm talking to a new manager to, to, to try and book and help my career with me and my brother, the Peace Brothers project, mm. you know, drum wars. Uh, probably going to finish another album with uh, Fernando. And we're definitely going to do King Cobra shows. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, we're finishing that. I talked to Carlos yesterday. I said, look, I, I want to go out and give a test to this thing. You know, maybe do four or five shows. You cool for that? And he says, yeah, let's go. So Beautiful. Rowan's in and Johnny Rod's in, me and Paul. So it's almost like a little super group, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. And, and, and everybody's a pro and everybody's a great musician. And mm. I think... Uh, I think it'll be fun, you know. So we now haven't played. We played one show in America in 2016, then we went to Europe, and we did three shows, and did Sweden Rock Festival, and did a live album. And there we had David Michael Phillips, Johnny Rod, me, Paul, and uh, this guy uh, Jordan Ziff, who, who was in Rat recently. Okay. You know? And uh, he's a nice young guitar player who's, who's smoking. So. We only played one show in America at Vamped in, in Vegas, and it was packed, and we did great. So you know, I'm, I'm talking to a few agents about booking King Cobra, and nice. we're putting a package together with photos and a bio and all that for them to, so they have something to, to play. You know? Right. Well, for sure. Well, if you if you do anything, you Cleveland loves you guys. I mean, we'd love to we'd love to see yeah, anything. That Cleveland you, you loves guys. all. Cleveland was always a great rock town. Mm. You know. Yeah. Was, was, was there an Oasis ballroom there? Is that some sort of ballroom in Cleveland? Oh, the Agora? That, well, there was the Agora. I played the Agora myself with uh, my drum off, my, my drum contest with a right. drum show with Michael DeRosha from Heart, me, oh. Sandy Gennaro, and Bruce Crump from Molly Hatchet at the time. And we, we, we played the Agora and sold out. Oh, sure. Oh, it yeah. Awesome. It was awesome. And uh, but there was a, lately a, a, something that reminds me of a beach ballroom. The beach lane ballroom? Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. <laughs> yes. I played there in the early 2000s, I think, with Vanilla Fudge. Right. You know? Okay. And, uh, but I, I, always loved, I always loved Cleveland. I just got a new tour manager from Youngstown. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's, he was great. It's awesome. So, uh, we're going to keep using him for all my projects. That's great, man. Well, we would love to see you. any any incarnation that you're in, whether it be Cactus, King Cobra. Would love yeah. to see that super group, awesome. like you say. I know um, we are working on. We have um, my manager said we have Cactus eight Cactus shows that they're working on. Wow. You know, so I don't know when. I know we have a couple of gigs in the Midwest, not Cleveland, but the Chicago area, okay. uh, April fifteenth and sixteenth. With Vanilla Fudge, they were moved from uh, the tour we just did because of COVID. Right. Yeah, we moved them there. This COVID thing really fucked the whole country up, man. Oh my it god! It really did. Between yeah. them and and what, what the government's doing with gas prices, and I mean, it's unbelievable what this shape this country's in. My hair. Never Absolutely. seen anything like it, you know. Yep. Well, well, hopefully we'll get uh, 2022. We turn in the corner and. Things will get back to normal, and and uh, I hope I so. Mean, this slowly but sure, the, this might be the new normal. You know, that's <laughs> what they keep saying. This is the new normal. I don't like it. I don't. This like is it. the new normal. I don't like it either. <laughs> but it's all over the world. I mean, you know, right? It's unbelievable. It is for yeah. sure. Okay. Well, well, Carmen, it's been a pleasure speaking with you again. I wish you best of luck with with both your new albums, the the box set and the. Uh, and your uh, app you. project, like you say. So uh, I will get and, the uh, word out and okay. tell people to 